If you want to get started as a no-code web designer and developer, you need a laptop that's going to excel your workflow exponentially. You see, most laptops are built with a purpose in mind, whether that be gaming, film editing, or something else. It's not all that common that computer companies make hardware specific for no-code or even just regular web developers and designers overall. So today, I'll be looking at the best offerings from Mac OS and Windows, depending on whichever you prefer. That way, if you aren't an Apple fan, there will be a Windows option for you and vice versa. By the end of the video, my hope is that you find a laptop that suits your needs perfectly. And if you found one that did, please be sure to hit the like on this video. So with that out of the way, here's the structure of the video. I'll be breaking down the best laptops by specific price ranges. We're going to start with the budget-friendly laptops, and then we're going to move on to some more premium laptops. I'll have one budget-friendly Mac, one budget-friendly PC, one premium Mac, and one premium PC. So in total, today we're going to be taking a look at four laptops, two Macs, two PCs. But before we dive in any further, I wanted to invite you to check out my channel. I'm a 24 year old who owns a web design and development agency while working full time. I talk about my experiences, creativity, and really anything entrepreneurial. If you like the sound of that, I'd really appreciate you subscribing to my channel. All right, so let's begin with the cost friendly laptops. Both of these laptops will fall somewhere between $700 and $1,200. And what we're really looking for here is pretty good color accuracy, speed, and of course, portability. Mind you, the laptop doesn't have to be the fastest. Thing ever in this price range, but we are looking for something that could last a long time. So I won't bore you with all the specs, I'm just going to give a basic rundown of some of the important ones. And for the budget-friendly Mac, we have the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. And for the budget-friendly PC, we have the Dell Inspiron 15-inch. So let's get started with that MacBook Air with the M1 chip. Out of the box, this is a fantastic package. Not only do you have Apple's M1 chip, which already beats most computers on the market, but you have a amazing color accuracy for a very affordable price. The sRGB color gamut on this machine is 99%, which means it's pretty much pinpoint accurate. When you're looking at sRGB color gamuts, you want anything around the 100% mark. Anything over that is literally perfect. Anything around that is good enough. We're looking at a 13.3 inch LED backlit display that is 2560 by 1600. It's rocking a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and it really is a gorgeous display, I have to say. The MacBook Air is super lightweight, very portable, and compact enough where you could bring it anywhere or dock it and put it on a monitor if you wanted. And guess what? It has 18 hours of battery life with that M1 chip out of the box. This is a powerhouse machine that is packaged in a more budget-friendly option. The baseline starts at 256 gigabytes of storage, and that starts right now at $999 on Amazon. I will say that Amazon occasionally runs deals, so I'm going to put a link in the bio to the most recent recent deal for this product. I've seen the MacBook Air go under $999 in the past, but it fluctuates and it's not all the time that this happens. Amazon also has really good renewed options, but you want to make sure when you're looking for a MacBook Air, you're looking for the one with the M1 chip because this chip is truly in a league of its own. Up next, we have the Dell Inspiron 15 inch. This laptop is rocking an AMD Ryzen 7 processor, which is very fast. It's also rocking a 15.6 inch FHD IPS touchscreen panel, which is really beautiful. This one's coming in at 1920 by 1080, so the resolution isn't quite as good as that MacBook Pro, but it still looks amazing. The Dell Inspiron 15 inch also takes a bit of a backseat in battery life, this one only rocking 10 hours of battery life, but that's still really long for a daily use. The color accuracy also drops a little bit to 72% here, so it isn't as color accurate as the MacBook Air, but it's still a runner up. Out of the box, you're going to get 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, which is an upgrade over that MacBook Air. The Dell Inspiron 15 inch is rocking Windows 11 and it starts at $1,005. I think if you're looking for a budget friendly device that has a big screen that can do everything we need to do as no code web designers and developers, this is a really good product. And again, this really comes down to preference. So if you like Mac OS more than you like Windows, you're going to want to go with the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. But if if you like Windows more than Mac, you're going to want to go with the Dell Inspiron 15 inch. Again, both of these links are in my bio. There's deals frequently ran on both of these machines. Up next, we have the premium laptops. These are going to offer the best in class, well, really everything that you could get for your money. You'd be just fine with the laptops that I previously mentioned, but if you have the money to spend and you want the latest and greatest, these are what these are going to be. Both of these laptops are going to fall in the $2,000 to $3,000 range, and they are really great for 
longevity. Similarly to the budget-friendly ones, though, Amazon does run deals frequently on all their laptops, so sometimes you'll see a drop in price for these ones as well. And for the two options in this category, I have the Premium Mac, which is the MacBook Pro 16-inch with the M1 Pro chip. And for the Premium PC, I have the Dell XPS 17-inch. Before I dive into both of them, may I say that both of these are absolutely fantastic devices. At this point, it really just depends on which you prefer, Mac or Windows. So let's start with the powerhouse, the MacBook Pro 16-inch. Out of the box, this MacBook Pro 16-inch is rocking the Apple M1 Pro chip. This chip is unfathomably fast, and I mean seriously, it is faster than anything on the market. It's also rocking a liquid Retina XDR display, and what does all of that mean? Well, basically, it's a gorgeous display with 120 hertz. The resolution here is looking at 3456 by 2234. This thing's also rocking 1600 nits of peak brightness, so this is very bright, very crisp, and a truly amazing display. Similar to the MacBook Air, this has an sRGB color gamut of 99%, so we're right on that cusp where it's pretty much perfect. And now this is where it gets crazy. The MacBook Pro 16 inch on paper rocks 21 hours of battery life. Now that sounds a little hard to believe, I know, but I actually have the 14 inch version of this and I can attest that it holds up. Maybe it doesn't quite hit 21 hours, it really depends on your workflow but it is definitely capable of coming close to it depending on what you do. And for 512 gigabytes of SSD, this starts at $2,399. So yeah, it's a lot pricier than the MacBook Air, but you are getting a pack-a-punch machine. I am a little biased here because I have the 14-inch version of this, but this is truly the best laptop on the market just saying. But here's where my bias goes out the door because this is a device that I really want that also performs very similar and it's the Dell XPS 17 inch. This thing is rocking the 11th generation Intel Core i7 processor. It also sports an Nvidia RTX graphics card. This thing is rocking a 17 inch UHD Infinity Edge touchscreen panel. Infinity Edge really just means that the screen wraps pretty much all the way to the edge. The resolution on this one is 3840 by 2400. And at 500 nits of brightness, this machine has a fantastic display. It may not get as bright as the MacBook Pro 16 inch, but it still is a fantastic display. Now, here's where this thing really shines. This thing has 171% of the sRGB color gamut, which is just overkill. This is beyond perfect color accuracy. But going back to what I said, really anything over 100 is perfect, and if you're at 99, hell, if you're at 90, you're pretty much on par. So while this is overkill, this is a fantastic machine for color accuracy. Out of the box, you're looking at 11 hours of battery life on this one, which is pretty normal for laptops. The, <laughs> the MacBook Pro 16 inch is overkill. And for 512 gigabytes of SSD, you're looking at $2,469.99 cents currently on Amazon. I can't stress enough, both of these machines are fantastic. Similar to the budget, really depends. If you like Mac OS, go with the MacBook Pro. If you like Windows, go with the Dell XPS. I promise you won't go wrong with either one of these and you don't really even need all of this stuff. So I'll let you guys discuss in the comments which one of these is the overall winner. Also, let me know if you own one of these or if you plan to get one of them. Now, I personally own the 14-inch version of the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. The reason I recommend the 16 inch one over the 14 inch is that extra screen real estate and I used to have the 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2019 and ever since I traded that in for the 14 inch, I missed that screen size. As no code web designers and developers were frequently on the go with clients, sometimes depending on how you work or we're docking it to a monitor. So really that's ultimately why I decided to go with the 14 inch. But when I am out on the road, it really is beneficial to have that extra screen size. And that's why I want that size. But again, what does it really matter? Most of the time when us web developers are working, we're docking this thing to monitors, so whatever. So I guess that means the MacBook Pro 16 inch that I recommended is kind of a twofold because for the same specs, pretty much, you could get the 14 inch one for a little bit cheaper. I don't know. Again, the links in the description will have the most up-to-date Amazon pricing on these, and you could buy them straight from there. If you do decide to do so, I will make a little bit of commitment.
commission on those purchases, but that's at no additional cost to you. All right, so today we looked at the top four laptops for web designers and developers, specifically no coders like you and I. If you found this video useful, make sure you like this video and leave a comment with which one of these is your favorite. If you want to stay up to date with all things no code, creativity, and entrepreneurialism, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and check me out. I post videos as frequently as I physically can. I do work full time, so I'm trying to make what I can. And if you want to see me review the top six no code website builders, check out the video that I'm going to put on one of these corners of the video. Until the next one, stay hungry, stay foolish, and thanks for watching. Thank you.